Welcome, this is Zidam Astrology once again, bringing you all ascendance for the Earth Trine in your tarot reading and analysis for the period October 1st to the 23rd, 2022. Okay, Earth Trine, we come to your reading and we start off obviously with the topic, the situation, you know, what you are currently facing. What is the question you want answered? Um, is it about your goal, your finances, your career, your relationships? And what card do we have to begin? My goodness, number 20, judgment. And the figures in this depicted in the judgment card, you know, they stand naked. Again, reminding us that when judgment day arrives, we will no longer be able to hide behind a facade, you know, or lies or pretense. All our deeds, both good and bad, will be exposed and laid bare before the higher powers and our, ourselves, you know. Nothing can be hidden on Judgment Day. And in the Judgment Card, we are being called by the angel to account for our past or present um, previous actions in life or in a particular situation and the judgment card with the angel blowing the trumpet heralds a time of arrival for us to atone for any misdeeds or upsets caused to others so you know this is not a trumpet but it's a hand pointing down to the naked persons in that cauldron of heat where they have to face judgment you know and we can face judgment through the law and the courts are a personal desire to right or wrong, to, give it, to forgive ourselves, to forgive others, or to ask forgiveness of others. Um, the judgment card represents, you know, a jury where you are awaiting a final um, solution or judgment in the outcome of whatever action or, or deed you may have done. So that, you know, you must be sure you have told the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, as they say, um, because your deceit and lies will be uncovered, you know. You will gain a lot of respect and it may give you another chance if you come front and say, you know, I did wrong, I'm sorry, I need to do penance or have repented on my sins so you know obviously there may be a consequence or a price to pay but you will re you will feel relieved you know and your conscience which has been calling to you will be cleared so it is a reading that suggests you have reached a crossroad in your life and you must exercise clarity of judgment as to how you are to proceed and which direction to take so if you are in doubt review your past experiences and actions taken and the outcome to determine which worked out best for you so that you can be judged fairly so this is your situation earth trine this is where you're at this is your goal for the period it may not be your goal but it is the card that is going to lady foundation for your reading and what is the heart of the, of the situation what is the card that influenced all of this and it's the tower card and it's because a sudden change is happening something happens suddenly and you are now in a position to be judged by others and by yourself and when the tower appears in a reading it is a sudden change and there is no way to avoid it because this is an external card and this change could be quite brutal it could be unexpected and it could be destructive you know change is forced upon you now and whether you want it or not but you have to deal with it and this has brought about judgment some change that you will not expect that hits you on a way is going to bring judgment in your life for the period October 1st to the 23rd and it always what happens when we cling on to things and people and attitudes or belief that are neither or worthy of us nor healthy for us in mind in, in mind body and, and, and soul or spirit 
you know the tower releases you sometimes by force but you have to build on the change you have to learn from it you it may shake your foundation you are going to be judged but it's nothing this is out of your hands earth trine these are two cards that are external forces it's major arcana here dealing with so that you know it you might have some pressure on some things that are happening in your life that may split and you know and it will open wide and that is what is going to change is going to come tumbling out of it and with that change come judgment so the tower brings you back down to earth with a bang and it is best not to resist it you know because it will be worse for you if you think you can outsmart the deities and the messages that are coming to you and when we refuse to free ourselves from um an unsuitable situation or belief system the so the the the, the tower is sent by the uni universe to do it for us so this is the change that you can't avoid this is judgment that you can't avoid so that you know it's going to be a shock it's going to bring us out of a complacent or comfort zone as it were and you know change is bound to be out of your control and it will be impossible to avoid so you know brace yourself brace yourself that change is coming and you are going to be judged either by yourself or by others and what is the internal and external factors that you are going to consider here here we have the 4 of swords and when the 4 of swords appears in a reading rest it tells you you have to rest and rest is not simply for 5 minutes it means that you really have to rest take your time recharge regenerate regurgitate if you have to but you need to rest and the rest implied can be for a certain period of time that you cannot rush and the two major arcana cards prior to the four of swords tells you that judgment is here the tower and change is going to bring judgment and it's going to be sudden and unexpected and then you have to rest for a time you need sleep you need to take a deep long rest you need to nourish yourself it is probably time to turn your back on the world for a little bit and retreat into your home or any bolt hole that makes you comfortable take a relaxing vacation the four of swords carries a very real warning of the consequences of not taking care of your mental health during stressful times you know if you are coping at present then this card suggests that you are close to the edge and you know if you do not take the necessary steps to take a break to take a rest then it may very well be forced upon you so that might even be the change that you know you have to get away from the rat race from the wheel from that water wheel that is just churning you going to work coming home going to work coming home taking care of the home taking care of children taking care of the spouse taking care of friends and family and not taking care of yourself so this might be the change that is forced upon you and the judgment might very well be that your mental health suffers so you know it may not be court it may not be um an issue a legal issue it might just be your health your relationships are suffering because you haven't taken a rest to think about yourself and what you are supposed to be giving to yourself and to others you know it could lead to breakdowns to you needing medical care hospitalization so that you have to be careful and then we have the chariot and the 10 of pentacles coming in in terms of what advice you are going to getting from the um deities and again the chariot is a major arcana card and the chariot tells you that the message is not to give up or to to, to hang on to something that is giving you stress but you know keep your determination keep going through but at the end of the day you need to rest take a journey cuz 
you know it's out of your control there is nobody pulling that chariot but you are sitting there needing a rest so take that rest earth trine you deserve it for for you to succeed for you to be victorious you must maintain a forward momentum but the only way you can do that is if you help yourself take a rest let somebody else lead that horse let somebody else pull pull the reins on that chariot lean back enjoy the ride travel understand what is coming and at the end of the day victory and success will be yours and what will be the outcome the outcome here is the ten of pentacles and you know the ten of pentacles is a card of stability of generational wealth of things coming to you from ancestors and your um, ancestral home or some um win some money that has a stable background you know some money or work that you have um achieved through hard work through doing the right things the traditional way the conventional way and you know all these um ancestors and descendants it's going to suggest you know a family line a continuity so you are going to have a stable outcome one that will ensure that the course you're taking is going to be a good one you know and as as you inherit family traits and personality and talents you also inherit their ability and you know their morals their ethics their traditions and on the material plane you will inherit you know business land property money assets it could be a lottery too you know but everything inherited comes responsibility and the responsibility here is to yourself take a rest you know you may also inherit negative things but the 10 of pentacles really speaks to positive to stability foundational growth foundational wealth generational wealth whether it is in physicality materialistic things you know it it is your karma it based on on what line you have inherited and the 10 of pentacles is a card of as i said solid foundation long term establishment um safety is suggested so that you know there's a sense of a tried and tested solidity of old values and the pentacles you know is it's methodical it's thorough so that you have stuck with what you know works now it's time to rest now it's time to take that travel let somebody else take the reins and you know the 10 of pentacles can bring out a little bit of risky behavior but it is grounded it is grounded in tradition and convention so that let us see what date we going to get with all of this earth trine and the date here is mama water and mama water is the mother water the mother of water you know and mama water is usually seen with a a mirror in hand and it's usually about opening up yourself becoming naked becoming vulnerable and you probably don't want to take that rest because you feel vulnerable you know but the mirror in mama water's hand represents a movement through the present and the future her devotees are able to create their own reality through um you know imaging themselves in their own recreation of mama water's wool and when you think about water you think about you know just resting there and having the water take you the ebb and flow of that water taking you to places unknown but you are resting you don't have to do anything cuz the current is doing everything but you can't surrender you can't you know let loose fully but you have to be aware of what is going on around you and that 10 of pentacles is giving you that stability and you know mama waters world it, it um, embodies her secret powers fulfilling the inventions of reality she's asking you to be vulnerable and show your emotions as they are your strength not your weakness 
you know she's a nurturing mother provider of riches healer of physical and spiritual ills so if you're tired and change is coming and you are going to be judged the four of swords is telling you take that rest the chariot is telling you let the reins go somebody else is going to drive you forward something else is going to drive you forward and mama water is there telling you you know be vulnerable because showing your emotions is not your weakness it is your strength and you know people are attracted to the seemingly endless possibility that mama water represents and at the same time frightened by her destructive potential because you know the way the waves can drown you and if you are not a swimmer if you are not good swimmer then of course you going out in the water is not a good thing so that mama water inspires a vast array of emotions attitudes and actions among those who worship her you know some fear her others study her and we often create works of art about her because we want to recall vulnerability our strength our weakness so that mama water straddles the earth water culture and nature so that this element of water is telling us that we need to separate ourselves a little bit and float a little bit you know do nothing for a little bit we have the foundation yes we are going to be judged but the outcome is that we have created a good foundation our ancestry our our inherited strength and ability is going to pull us through and then we have the message from the bhagavad gita which is the sage and this comes from chapter 2 verse 69 again it's dealing with the sankhya yoga analytical knowledge and the verse 69 tells us what all beings consider as day is the night of ignorance for the wise and what all creatures see as night is the day for the introspective sage and basically what this verse is telling us is that those who are in the mundane or you know the material world consciousness look to material enjoyment as the real purpose of life they consider the opportunity for worldly pleasures as the success of life or d and deprivation from sense pleasures as darkness or night on the other hand those who have become wise with divine knowledge see sense enjoyment as harmful for the soul and hence view it as night they consider refraining from the objects of the senses as elevating to the soul and hence look on it as the as the day using those connotations of the words shri krishna states that what is night for the sage is day for the worldly minded people and vice versa so basically material things don't really bring you enjoyment or the sense and pleasure that you want it is the spiritual world it is the soul the harmful the divine knowledge that gives you that enjoyment so learn this lesson take the message and understand what you have to do earth trine for the period october 1st to the 23rd 2022 as you know here at zidam astrology i always thank bhagwan because i am springing out with these videos from the help and guidance of god and at the end of the day i will always thank him for guiding me and allowing me to bring a message to you i pray that you will always remain healthy happy and safe until i see you the next time i have made some changes at ziram astrology to bring you a tutorial or tutorials that follow this final slide here well it's not the final slide obviously but uh three slides follow here it's a tutorial if you are interested in understanding my reasoning as to bringing you the 
uh, trine concept in my tarot readings rather than the individual concept like many others i believe in what i do i believe in sharing i believe in transferring knowledge so if you are interested in understanding why i do what i do there are three slides in which i will be guiding you in, as to how i think and why i think the way that i do thank you for sticking with me thanking you for understanding my methods i hope that you sign up share and subscribe until next time this is the trine concept for the earth which includes taurus virgo and capricorn and you know the earth is stable practical and sensible and the earth signs have patience and they prefer to wait letting things happen in their own time you know instead of pushing the matter this can make them stuck in their ways at times and they can be the most closed off of the signs they prefer to have a calm stable life and are the most hurt hard working of the trines in the zodiac the earth signs are taurus which is the most immovable stubborn virgo which is the most practical and capricorn which is the hardest worker of the tree so that here we have the earth signs where they keep it real you know they are the grounded people on the planet the ones who bring us down to earth and remind us to start with a solid foundation slow and steady uh, these are the builders and they are loyal and stable and they stick by their people through thick and thin, you know, we see through hard times even. You know, on the good days, they are practical. At the worst, they can be materialistic or too focused on the surface of the things to, to dig a little more deeper to get to the root of the issue. So this is the Earth, Trine, Taurus, Virgo and Capricorn. Okay, this is your tutorial as I mentioned to you in this video that I'm going to leave a tutorial so that you can see why I have formulated the trying concept to read horoscopes at Zedam Astrology rather than read individual signs from Aries to Pisces for you. And I have found in my research and in my reading and from my teachings that there are commonalities between the tarot and the kundali which is your birth chart in vedic astrology so that these are the commonalities that have aligned together that have created a method that will utilize the um tarot and the and vedic astrology to read uh and analyze for you in the trine concept and this is a kundali or birth chart taken randomly on somebody born on april 21st 2022 at 6 a.m and this person's birth chart or natal placements are here for you to see that these are the placement this is the fate of this person this is the ascendant or lagna as we say in vedic astrology where we say this is the first house of the 12 houses in the zodiac sign so wherever the ascendant or lagna falls is where we denote in vedic astrology your first house and in this particular chart we go clockwise from aries to pisces so that we'll know where your first to twelfth house falls so your first house is aries your twelfth house will be jupiter and each house in vedic astrology denotes something it denotes your wealth your family your siblings your relatives your children your marriage your father your mother your work your career your community your luck your spirituality your illnesses whether it's chronic or routine you know how you will earn your money how you will lose your money a multiplicity of things and each of these houses has its significations that we read for you in vedic astrology so this is your natal chart this is your fate you cannot change the the positioning of these planets in your um kundali because this is the placement of the planets when you were born the time you were born and the place you were born however you cannot change fate but you can change destiny and destiny comes from the transit of the planets because each of these planets they move from one sign to the next during particular periods and they you can change your destiny through your freedom of expression and will, through your ambition, through your
courage so that you can change destiny you can't change fate and the transit of planets will give you a chance to change your destiny and transits um planets move as we see here saturn every 2.5 years and so on and so forth this is how planets move from one sign to the next neptune takes 14 years to move from one sign to the next mercury takes one month sun takes one month and you will see these are the 12 planets that i deal with in in Zena, at Zedam astrology so that they are the ones that i look at and how they move and every placement of a planet in a particular sign says something does something has an aspect on your natal planet and it it throws out potential or a pathway for you to understand what can be happening you know it is the, the natal chart is a map of what the sky was like on the day for us to know ourselves and to better, better understand the types of energy we have available for each moment and situation in life and because of the transits where destiny can be changed we can say that this uh, placement is not decisive but it shows options and it marks pathways in which we can um, utilize to make choices during our lifetime and then we have the source code of astrology and that feaw is basically fire earth air and water those are the trines that i look at and the four elements are the source code of astrology and they are the blueprint of your soul you know you become the architect of your, your destiny by using this blueprint of our soul and the blueprint of our soul one of the trines that i use because it's the foundation you know one of the trines tri that i use is the derma tricona and the derma trine tells you that you know this is this is the trine that keeps us um on on the soul's mission the accumulated merit and the manifestation of past karma and this 159 denotes the houses one five and nine and as as you see we have fire earth air and water trines so this is the source code of astrology and tradition holds that religious duty your dharma is the primary aim of human life since, since it is the foundation which you develop your wisdom and your discretion to pursue wealth which is arta which is another trine happiness karma which is a third trine and we we, we pursue these um, wealth and happiness from the wisdom we get from dharma so that we will not compromise our chances of liberation which is moksha which is the fourth trine but i use the first trine because it is the foundation it is the primary aim of the um of your birth on this earth and hinduism describes the dharma trine as the natural universal laws whose observance enables us to be contented and happy and to save ourselves from degradation and suffering so that dharma is the moral law combined with spiritual discipline that guides our life you know and this is what the dharma trine is and i'm just going to pull up another version of a of the zodiac circle the 12 signs and we will i'll just give you an example so that this um random kundali or birth chart gives you aries as the ascendant and with aries as the ascendant that will be the first house the first house will be aries the fifth house will be leo and the ninth house will be sagittarius and this is the trine so aries leo sagittarius is the fire trine and with the fire trine even if your first bhava is leo then leo will be your first house um sagittarius will be your fifth and aries will be your ninth you will still remain in that trine if your ascendant moves from aries to leo or sagittarius and remember your ascendant moves every two and a half hours every day 
from one zodiac sign to our next in Vedic astrology. And then we have the earth trine and the earth trine can begin with Taurus. And if it begins with Taurus, then you would have as your fifth as your fifth house, you will have Virgo. As your ninth house, you will have Capricorn. And this is your earth trine. Then your air trine will be Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius. That is your air trine. And obviously your water trine will then be Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. So that all your signs are taken care of there as you see. So these are the trines. And why I do the horoscope in trines is because Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, when one is activated, each of these are activated because they are in a trine. They are in a, a, a dharma trine, a dharma, where your, your duty, where your, where your vision, where your wisdom are all created for you to understand that first house is you, you are born, then fifth house is your children, and the ninth house is your father. So you get the circle of evolution. Your father produces you with your mother. Your mother helps you throughout your life. When you are an adult, then you produce children. And that is where you get this circle of evolution. So that the Dharma trine here is what connects each of these three signs in the zodiac. And then we have the tarot deck and the tarot deck as we know it has wands pentacles swords and cups and you will see that the wands is with fire the pentacles is earth and swords are air and cups are water so that here now we have the commonality between the tarot deck and the zodiac astrology the source code of astrology so that you know this is what i find with the commonalities there are so many other things that i can speak about but this is the basic you know this is the basic and if we have to talk about you know a tarot spread you know that my go-to tarot spread is the tetractus and the tetractus tarot spread comes from that greek philosopher pythagoras who threw out for us the pythagoras theorem and he, you know, he can be viewed as a Vedic Brahmin because three of the things he did or believed in was that he wore white exclusively. He was a vegetarian and he believed in reincarnation. And his theorem existed in the Sanskrit texts in India. So that, you know, there we have the, the commonality again. And then even so, the tarot deck, the fire is clubs, pentacles is diamonds, swords is aligned to speeds, and cups is aligned to hearts. So this is where we get the commonalities. This is where I can utilize a union of tarot and Vedic astrology to bring you a different, a complex issue, but a different take on reading your birth chart because you cannot live by yourself you weren't born by yourself and you can't grow up by yourself there is a community and that community brings the trine so that you feel comfortable if you are in the fire trine with people from leo and sagittarius if you were born in aries likewise it goes so for the other trines so this is my research this is my method that i use and I hope I was clear, complete, and concise. I ask that you share, sign up, and subscribe. Review my videos. Look at my transit series. And I will join you next time. Thank you so much. The trines synergy in Vedic astrology and tarot is given here showing you the alignment of the houses 159 that makes up the trine any way you count it or check it or review it and it also introduces the Kendras the houses of Lord Vishnu and these are the houses 147 and 10 in Vedic astrology again you can get further details on this or an explanation in my previous video